Heading down the road. Heading down the road. Yeah, I'm going real slow. And I'm going real slow. My baby left me. My baby left me. Got nowhere to go. Got nowhere to go. She said she don't love me. She don't love me. Yeah, months too slow. Going too slow. Got a guitar. Got a guitar. But I play it real slow. Play it real slow. Going crazy, boogie woogie. Boogie woogie. Yeah, not real slow. Not real slow. My baby left me. Yeah. Why well, never? Hi, this is Jeff Langton, also known as the Jolton J. This is Kings of the Blues, and today our guest is J.C. Smith. Hey, this is Johnny Cosmic, KKEP Cupertino, back in the studio with the Silicon Valley Blues Society. We had a couple of representatives here, I'm sure you've heard this earlier, and we're going to talk a little more about it. I'm really excited about what's going on with you guys. I know there's, there's some really cool stuff. And Marianne, how can people get more involved? So, um, talking about the Silicon Valley Blues Society, you can first of all go to www.svblues.org mm -hmm. and you can sign up right online to become a member. There's several levels and it's just very exciting. Everybody we talk to that becomes a member or is thinking about becoming a member has been coming to our booth at all the festivals this summer and they're just so excited that there's a presence now in the South Bay. And it takes a community, so we're so excited. We're starting a street team and we have many people that want to volunteer for that and get involved. And people are just really excited that Silicon Valley and the South Bay and the heart here in San Jose is really supporting the blues. And, and if you say it any other way, Silicon Valley Blues, we support the blues. That's why we're here supporting venues and musicians and all the people who love the blues in the area. And we just want to spread that into the community. I mean, this thing is crazy. It's taken off like wildfire, you know, and people are really enthused and, and getting involved. And I hear there's other societies that are tagging on and stuff. And, you know, we're the biggest area here in Silicon Valley. We cover from East Palo Alto down to, what, Morgan Hill, Gilroy area. And there's a lot of venues. If you look at San Francisco, there is no real scene. We are the scene. And it's way overdue for us to get some stuff happening here. And this is incredible that you guys are doing all this stuff you know I get to be a part of it but I'm usually just like playing guitar and I'm like boring and stuff and people go okay where's the next act you know and uh, but you know I'm, I'm really I'm really happy to be a, a part of this thing it's it's exciting and uh, Pamela now I gotta ask you something now I know you guys are at a lot of festivals you guys do a lot of cool stuff you've had seminars teaching musicians a bunch of stuff that they don't know or they need to know Tell me about some other things you guys are going to do. Well, we're working on a kids um, summer camp, a blues summer camp. Um, we're working with some folks in Chicago, and um, hopefully they're going to come out and help us facilitate this next summer. Um, when I was at the festival yesterday, I had a young man about 11 years old come up and ask me what he could do to be in the blues. And it was the perfect nice. opportunity to share about the summer camp. And so we're going to email each other and hopefully get him involved. So it's really exciting because, you know, we have to have the youth um, in order to keep the blues alive. That's so. right. I agree 100%, you know. And, and you know, one, one thing that I notice is it's not so much that the kids won't be involved. They're just not exposed to it. And that's why I'm so happy to be here at KKP because we play the stuff that you don't get to hear anywhere else, like a lot of the other listener supported or college stations. And kids are listening to all the sold out uh, stations that are trying to sell you a car and they're playing hip hop and whatever makes the big money. They're not into the history of what's going on. And my notice at festivals, once the kids are involved, they just latch on, they dig it. Absolutely, you absolutely. Know? We see it all the time. You know, what they say about the blues, if you don't dig the blues, you got a hole in your soul. <laughs> we so, agree. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I want to thank you guys because it's my time's up here, and uh, I want to say it's KKP Cupertino. It is two minutes before five o'clock. The conductor's coming in right now, and he's going to be playing blues for you for the next couple hours. And I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go have some fun, and I want to thank you guys for coming out. And uh, don't forget, keep the blues alive. Ron, you ready? We gonna play some blues. One, two, and ah. <laughs> Leaving in the 
morning, won't be back no more. Going down south, y'all, don't you want to go? I'm in mean, I'm trouble. I've been all worried, man. Well, I just never can be satisfied. Just can't keep from crying. Well, now I feel like sticking a pistol right dead in your face. Gonna make one of these graveyards be your resting place. While I'm trouble. I be all JC, we finally mind. got you on the show, man. You know, it's good to have you here. We just saw your uh, 335 Gibson with the inlay of your name. Mm -hmm. So, like, tell, tell our audience about your guitar and how that came about. Well, I, I got endorsed with Gibson uh, quite a few years ago, actually early on in my guitar playing career since I've only been doing it 13 years. And they, uh, I, I met some of the guys in Chicago and I talked to them and Gibson's all I wanted to play. And for some strange reason, after a couple of years, I got on, they gave me artist price, and I knew exactly what I wanted from the, the signature 335. And, uh, and, and I got it, you know, they, they built it and they shipped it to me. It still smelled like lacquer when I got here, and I've been playing for a number of years now. Let's talk about your amplification and what you do, you know, with your pedal boards and what kind of things you have on your pedal boards. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I've used a lot of different amps. When I first got the 335, my setup would have been a Mesa Boogie because it sings. You get the best feedback there is. And then I switched over to Fender amps, of course, because they're just so versatile and they're road worthy. And you don't have to be a rocket science to dial, no rocket science to dial them in. Uh -huh. So basically, uh, now, my setup now is an Evil Twin 100 watt um, uh, Fender amp. And I use the the dual setting to where I can control both sides because it has a little bit of drive and crunch on one side uh, and it sings real well and with the 100 watts you can have it at low volume and still have a bunch of power. So that's what I like. I'm, I'm one of the loudest men in the world except for a couple of my peers. Well you know the thing is is that that's interesting about you know, your loudness and stuff like that and you know a lot of people use different types of strings and you know, the audience would probably like to know about what kind of strings that you prefer. Are you endorsed by a string manager? Yeah, you? as a matter of fact, Dean Markley strings. I've been with them for 10 years, but actually I'm, uh, a lot of people are leaving because there's been some changes. Dean sold the company. And TM Stevens, the bass player, he's asking us to uh, uh, go with him because a lot of the staff went over to Cleartone. And I tried some of their strings. They're a long-lasting string and they're coated. Excellent string. And uh, the coating doesn't really matter on those. They don't flake, they don't do anything. They're treated and they just sing and they're long lasting. So, what gauge do you use, JC? Uh, on the 335, I use an 11. I use uh, 10s on my um, Les Paul, and I also use a one bottom 11 and the rest from a 10 set on my SG. So let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit and go back to the beginning of your career. You know, you were a drummer in a back-to-back -back band, and yeah. let's, let's talk about, you know, your transition from being a drummer to a guitar player. Yeah, well, you know, um, my first instrument was a guitar, and I didn't learn how to play anything on it, you know, and, I, and eventually when I was in junior high, I got a, uh, a drum set, and I played with the band then. And I didn't play for a number of years, and I played when after my mother passed, and I was with Back to Back after the band was created out of a contest that we won for mm -hmm. a number of years. After cutting a few records, got a little frustrated, you know, and I, I, I was married then, and my ex-wife was a pain in the you-know-what, and she wanted me to get a job instead of continuing. I was going to college, and I was trying to re-educate myself. I left a lot of bad habits alone. So lo and behold, I says, I'm going to play guitar. I, Got, uh, I'd gotten a guitar and I'd gotten an amp. I said, if I'm going to learn how to play the blues, I'm going to the deepest, darkest Oakland so I can get greasy as I can. And uh, the guys embraced me. I'd go up and I'd play one song, two songs. The next thing I know, I was up for a set. You know, Then I was up for the whole night within six months. So that's kind of how that transition started. Eventually, the cats that I jammed with asked me to start a band, and I was still playing drums with back to back. And I'd always complain I'm a drummer, not a guitar player, but they thought I was a good front man. Started a band and everything just took off. 